wrong. I'm sorry. About what? I, um... I was just remembering that part in Dorian's book about young James and the olive oil. Young James and the... Oh, I never read that part. What do you say we forget about Dorian's book? Well, see, that's kind of hard to do. The second installment came out this morning's sun. So what? Don't read it. This is where you're getting the olive oil stuff from. Well, I, I peeked at page two, and there is suddenly a paragraph. And I was wondering if you and Dorian... You know what? I'm not going to think about this anymore. Good. I think it's very unhealthy to worry about her stupid book. I agree. Good. Good. Well, then let's just enjoy the day. Come on. I passed my psych test. It's a beautiful day. We are Dorian-free. <sighs> And the last person in the pool has to give two unanswered back rubs. It's so unfair. Now, okay, Dorian. If we can arrange the photo right about here, then we can get the sign in the background saying Landview Country Club. What do you think? Oh. Whatever you say, Arthur, though, really, I don't think your readers are going to be looking at any signs. Well, of course not, but just for the record, we've got the location where we launched the biggest publicity campaign in publishing history for your book. <laughs> This does make sense. Why are we even talking Nora, about it's this? it's too risky. Yeah, we're on a roll here. I can feel it. It feels right. Nora, tonight will only be the second chance I've had time to spend with Rachel. Last night, we stayed in the room, we talked, she felt very comfortable. Fine, then take her out for a drink or something at the corner bar. Archie and I can hide in a booth. She'll never know we're there. Nora, we've been all through this. If Rachel sees us, she's gonna know Drew's in on, and she's gonna bolt. Then what? I just haven't had a chance to see her or hear her voice. I know. But we've made contact. Yeah, so now the trick is, is to get Rachel to trust me. See me as someone she can depend on. And then, and then when things feel right, I'll tell her who I am. But it's, it's just, we can't risk her finding out this soon. She's too nervous about it. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. And then if... Yes? It's Rocky. Do you have a minute, Drew? Sorry, we didn't uh, get here sooner. I just heard about Dylan this morning. How's he doing? Well, um, he's just coming out of the anesthesia, but I think it's going to be a little while. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. I'm going to be fine. Dylan's the important one now. I'm just really worried. I haven't heard how the surgery went. I've been trying to get a hold of... Oh, Dr. Robbins, I I've been doing messages for you. Yes, I just got all your messages. Sorry, I was in OR. Uh... Oh, um, Dr. Robbins, this is Max Holden. Uh, she's Dylan's surgeon. Max... Is Dylan's uh, brother-in-law, and you know Andy. Hi, Andy. 
Mr. Holden. Uh, uh, I do. Uh, how, how's he doing, Doc? The operation went okay? He'll be fine? Well, we like to take these things one step at a time. Right now, we're all real pleased that he got through the surgery so well. No, what about his movement? I mean, what about his legs? Can, can you move his legs? I mean, we, we need to know what's going to happen now. I know it's a surprise, but um, I have a problem, and, and I was hoping you could help. Drew? Uh, yeah, just a second. I just have to get off the phone. Yeah, that's good, that's good. She's starting to trust you. She's reaching out, but we've got to get out of here. Well, where are we? Let go. Oh. Okay. Good to see you. Like I said, you caught me on the phone. Uh, sorry about the wish. So hey, you, did, you didn't come over here to cancel our date, did you? No, no. Um, I, I still want to. I mean, if you want. Yes, I do. Great. No, um, my problem is um, I need money. I can't really explain it all right now, but since we're going to be seeing each other later tonight, anyway, I thought maybe you could advance me a few bills to, to help me with my problem. I, I know I'm like this total stranger and everything, and you have no reason to really trust me, right? But, um, look, just forget it. It's such a stupid idea. I don't no, no, know. No, it's no you problem, don't really. really. I, mean, it, it, I, mean, I mean, money's just money. Yeah. But this, this problem, it, it sounds, sounds kind of bad. I mean, you want to talk about it? Are you in some trouble? Um, Can I help? Well, the truth... Excuse me. Hello? Hey there, son. How's it going? Any word on Rachel? Marty, you should know by now. Doctors make educated guesses based on the scientific evidence that's available. We can't make predictions. I, I know. Well, I'm just so scared for him. Well, I know, and that's understandable. But last semester, you were in my neurology class, so I know you understand what we're dealing with here. Mr. Moody had what we call a spinal compression. And there were two bone fragments that were chipped off during an earlier injury. He fell on the island when he came to rescue us. We were able to remove one of the fragments, but I'm afraid that the other one was too impacted. We couldn't remove it without severing the spinal cord. His neurological deficits remain unchanged. Wait a minute. What are you saying? That he could be paralyzed? It's too soon to tell. Uh, this may be due to spinal shock, but yes, paralysis is one possible outcome. You need to prepare yourself for that, Marty. But he fell days ago, and, and he was all right. I was playing basketball with him right before this happened. Spinal cord injuries can be very insidious. Uh, the full impact often doesn't present for days. Apparently, when he fell on the island, that was the true injury. Then the bone fragments began to move, eventually lodging themselves in the new area, causing the damage. Look, I am sorry, I've got to take this. I'll come back to you later when Dylan's awake. E excuse me. But maybe we should go get a cup of coffee or something. Or someplace for you to rest. Did you get any sleep last night? No, not really. Look, you get some rest, because when he comes to... He's going to need you like he's never needed anybody. I know what I'm talking about here. Remember, I went through this with Luna, and she needed everybody that loves her around her. Deep down, I think that's what got her through. So you get some rest. You get focused on what's important here, which is getting him better, okay? Look, I'm going to go to the doctor, see if I can get some more information. Andy, make sure she gets some rest. I'll try. You must be going crazy with all this happening, and right when you were planning on leaving Dylan. Hey, what about what happened last night? 
Patrick understood why you didn't show up, right? I really didn't get a chance to explain. What? I mean, you, you can find him? Oh, no, I found him. In the stables on the bed with Blair. Sorry, I didn't know you were here. <clears throat> I know I said something, but... Oh, relax. I you didn't say anything. You just mumbled, then <sighs> you reached out and took my hand. Actually, I thought it was kind of sweet. Yeah. <laughs> what time is it, anyway? Uh, when did you get back? I never left. You were here all night? Mm -hmm. Right there by your side. <clears throat> You know, when you started trashing this place last night, throwing bottles around, I was afraid you were going to hurt yourself. You know, you mumbled in your sleep all night long. Oh, um... I'm sorry I kept you awake. So you must have straightened up the place. Yeah. Oh, how could I sleep so long and so deep? Well, Patrick, I think that people do that when they've been hurt. It's, um... It's kind of an escape, you know? Yeah. Well, thanks for everything. I think I'll be fine now. I'm <clears throat> sure you'll want to get home. Well, I tell you what. I'm going to get you some coffee. The way you look, I think you need a large pot. You stay right there. Patrick. Look, I'm, um... Uh, I'm sorry Marty didn't come. But at least now you know. Dorian, if, if this is quite what we want. You mean, is it in good taste, Arthur? Absolutely not. But then, we don't want your readers confusing me with Jane Austen, now do we? There's not much chance of that. <laughs> oh, Arthur, I know that this isn't the sort of literary tome that your company likes to publish, but trust me, it's going to make you lots of money. Oh. Yes, that's what we're hoping. <laughs> <laughs> Count on it. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Did you know that the Sun had to print an extra 3,000 copies? Yes, for my second installment. Really? Mm hmm Because the first installment, which came out a couple of days ago, completely sold out. That's exciting. <laughs> yes, indeed. Excuse me, would you mind? Arthur, I'll let you in on a little secret. This is just the beginning. Yes, there's going to be a major tie-in with Blair's company, Melador. Oh, the, the, the cosmetics firm, yes? Yeah? Yes, shh. We're going to do face cream, perfume, body lotion. Hmm. See, here's the key. Just hold it in. The baby boomers are turning 50. Yes, so. How's this for an advertising campaign? Okay, fellas. <clears throat> Hit it. It's never too late for a fling. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's intriguing. Huh? Oh, gosh, it's going to make millions. And it's going to sell a lot of books, too, which in turn will make you millions. Now, that's what I like. Uh -huh. I think that's about it, right? <laughs> think about it. The licensing fees, the subsidiary rights. We'll do T-shirts. Oh, oh, Kelly. So, oh. well, darling, I'm glad that uh, I ran into you because uh, I have I've been wanting to talk to you. Well, that's good because I've um, <clears throat> been thinking about talking to you too. Mm. Although I have to warn you, you're not going to like. So I walked into the stables all set to tell Patrick why I hadn't been there like we'd planned, and he is on the bed with Blair. Oh, my God. Oh, were they? No. Well, um, they had their clothes on. She had her arms around him. And... I felt so foolish. No kidding. It's just, I, I, I spent so long denying how I felt about Patrick. 
I do love Mandy. So then I, I go after him when I get on the boat and we almost die. And then Dylan, Dylan, if he hadn't come on that island to help find us, he never would have been hurt. Come on, no, he might be okay. The doctor said we would look anything until he, he wakes up. No, come on. They said that they couldn't remove the second bone fragment. You know what that means. And, and Patrick, I mean, I go to, to see him thinking he's going to be miserable because I haven't showed up. No, he said he's with Blair. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, that just doesn't sound right. I mean, why would he do something like that? I don't know. I, I, I gave him a message. I, I don't understand. He should have known something was wrong. Why would he give up on me so soon and go to Blair? I don't know, but that just, it, it doesn't sound like the Patrick that I know. Marty. Oh, I think, Marty. I think that was Dylan. I think I heard him in the way. Dylan's calling out Marty's name. Obviously not too busy at the moment. Hello, Kevin. How about a little statement? Not now, all right? Why not? Come on, big guy, you owe me. You've taken off on me, what is it now, two times. We're both trying to get something on Hesser. I thought we were a team. I can't help you unless you're going to help me. Later. Nope, sorry, not later. Now. Come on. You got on the boat. You were totally unaware that this beautiful woman was aboard, and... Kevin, what please, happened? tomorrow. You know, Patrick, I know it's a real bummer about what happened to Dylan, but can I at least get one or what two... What do you mean? What, what happened to Dylan? What? He's in the hospital. Of course, spinal cord injury. He's been in surgery all night. I knew something was wrong. Patrick, th there's nothing that you can do. Please don't go. Patrick! Patrick! <sighs> Kelly, darling, I hope you know that you can always feel free to talk to me, thank you, Arthur, about anything that you feel like. Fine. It's about the book. If you can call it a book. What did you call it, Joey? Garbage? Trash? Slime? I think... Pig swill? I think we've got plenty of pictures, don't you? Oh, 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 definitely, yes. Um, yes, well, uh, thank you. That, that will be... That will be all. Oh, fellas, it was a joy working with you. Till next time, darling, please. Thank you. I know that uh, Joe has made his feelings about the book abundantly clear, and he's very upset. However, I hope that you're going to keep an open mind, because really, there, there is absolutely no reason for you to feel offended. Oh. I should not feel offended when I read in the paper how my boyfriend licked champagne out of your navel. Honey, just try to keep your voice down. What about the, uh, what about the one in today's sun, Dorian? How you and my boyfriend rubbed each other with olive oil till you couldn't stand it anymore, and then you had to go make love out on your driveway. All right. Maybe should I be offended? I took some Christmas license. Eve night, Dorian. You gave my boyfriend a very special dessert, didn't you? And we cannot forget the attic. So can we? No, because you have to play your stupid little game, leather and lace, with my uh, Okay, Joey, don't you think you should tell your girlfriend that they're that getting a little Kelly. close to the pool? Uh, okay. Kelly tends you to do things her own way. You learn to just let her go. Just She's just trying to make a point. Hi. Ah. Ah! Looks like she made her point. <laughs> Is Nora there? I wish I could help you, man, but I can't. You can't what? I mean, look, <laughs> Drew, listen, uh, I just called to see how things were going there, so um, if you see Nora, just tell her that I miss her, tell her I, I love her. Will you do that? I, I tell you, Otto, I really need those tickets, okay? Otto? Well, yeah, yeah, I, I really need them, man, all right? No, tell the broker, price is no object, okay? You tell him I've got this beautiful lady who will be disappointed she can't see Sunset Boulevard. And I really want to make her happy, all right? In fact, she's right here with me. Oh, God, you got Rachel with you right now? You got it, my man. So don't let me down on those tickets, okay? Yeah, that's great news. Listen, call me later, okay? Okay, thanks. I'm sorry. You, uh, getting Broadway tickets for tonight? 
Well, if, if the concierge can come through for me, yeah. I forget about that. Well, tell me about this problem. Um, see, uh, this friend, it's, it's a woman um, that I work with at the escort agency. She's the one who really needs the money. She doesn't have any medical insurance, and um, she has pneumonia. At least that's what they think it is. And she needs to pay her doctor, so um, if you could advance me my fee, I'd really appreciate it. Okay. Well, like I said, money's just money. But just tell me one thing. Sure. This friend? Is that really you, Rocky? Dylan, can you hear me? Marty? Yes. Can you open your eyes? Marty. Max. Hey, you old hillbilly. When are we going fishing? Where's Darlene? Well, she's gonna be mad at you. Okay, okay. Why don't you take a couple deep breaths for me, all right? Can you do that for me? Yeah. Listen, I think Andy and I should give you two some time alone. We'll be right out in the hall. Okay. Take a couple deep breaths for me right now. That'd be the best thing for you. God, he still thinks Luna's alive. Don't worry about that. That's just the drugs. Listen, you keep that positive attitude everyone's always complaining about, okay? We need it now, especially Dylan, all right? Okay. What's with you? You're shaking, huh? Oh, God, just a bad couple of days. You know, until me and I are fighting without Dylan. When was the last time you ate? I don't remember. Listen, I'm gonna go to the cafeteria. I'm gonna get you something. You stay put. See Margaret. No! Don't you understand? That's the last thing that she needs right now. <sighs> That's good. A couple more deep breaths. We'll have your blood pressure up and we'll have you wide eyed in no time. All right. <clears throat> yeah, I'm right here. What happened? Uh, hey, don't worry. Don't worry. <sighs> What's going on? No, no, no. Come on. It's all right. It's all right. I can't feel my legs. <clears throat> it's all right. I can't feel my legs. <sighs> No, please, just lie still, please. No, Dylan, lie still, okay? That's it. Now, listen to me. You just had some surgery, okay? But I need to let them know that you're awake so they can give you something, all right? Now, just stay here and lie still, okay? I'll be right back. Don't leave me. Marty, what happened? What's going on? The last thing I remember was we were, we were in the community center. I was I was angry, and then, and then I asked you something. I asked you a question. I threw the ball. And what was it? What was it? Whatever you came here to say, why don't you say? Don't even think about that right now. We'll, we'll talk later. We'll talk later. I just need you to lie here, okay? Please don't move. Just lie still. It's gonna be all right. Everything's gonna be all right. All I want is to make sure that she's all right. No. Patrick, look, now is just not a good time, okay? She's got to deal with Dylan, and I'm afraid if she sees your face, too, that she's gonna fall to pieces. Why can't you just give I... her... Patrick? Marty. Look, I was just telling Patrick that now is not a good time. No, that's all right. I'll, I'll talk to him.
I don't believe you, Kev. Hey, Bob. You have really sunk to an all-time low. You know that? Obviously, Patrick wouldn't give you an interview, so you come down here and you rifle through the poor guy's stuff. No, that's not the problem. Actually, the problem is I have this uncle. He's the commissioner of police, and he's really mean. And he won't help his struggling nephew at all. Well, them's the breaks. Look, since Thornhart's not here, why don't you come down to the station? I'll tell you everything I know. Believe me, it's not going to be very much. Anything on Hesser? Hesser is as clean as his head is bald. Kevin, come on. Believe me, I, I, if I knew anything, if we had anything on him at all, I would tell you. I believe you. It's just that you, normally you give me a much harder time. That's all this business with Dylan. I got to me, and I miss Nora. She's off in New York trying to hunt down Rachel. Right. You know, I don't understand how all this happened to Rachel. The girl that I remember was strong, a leader, on her way to the top. And Hank and Nora, you can't find two more supportive parents. Well, that, that might be part of the problem. See, Rachel thinks that they just put too much pressure on her. Maybe. But in my opinion, the only person putting pressure on Rachel is probably Rachel. And that way, she's just like her parents. OK. Yeah. The friend who actually... The friend who's in trouble is actually... me. So you need the money. Right. And I... I made up that stuff about being sick. It's not that. Hey, whatever. I, I know you said you had problems with your family, you know. You can't turn to them even if times are tough. You want to give me the money? No, no, no. It's no problem, really. Like you said, money's just money. It's just, you know, from what you said yesterday, your parents seem like decent people. They are. It's just that they don't understand me. Okay? They're total perfectionists. Ambitious, too. Man, when they invented the word ambitious, they, they were describing my parents. You know, they always have to succeed. Even though they totally blew up their marriage, not to mention my life. They want to bring me home. You know why they want to do that? Because they want to hide me. I'm the family failure. But hey, right? I mean, who cares? Why am I telling you all this? Hey, time? Come on, I don't mind listening. Yeah, well. Can I have the money, please? Sure. Can you just hold one second, okay? I need some more money, a couple hundred dollars. Rachel didn't need those things. I wish I could believe that. Okay. Got to get to an ATM before tonight, but this will help. It's great. This will really help a lot. Thanks. Any time. You know, um, I think it's really lucky how you uh, just happen to pop up in my life like this, you know? Uh, hey, hey. Tonight, about 7 o'clock? Yeah. Okay, she's gone. All right, man. She's really starting to trust you.
okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Good. Let me see if we could change get out of here. Okay? And don't feel bad. You deserve that. I, I, I'm sorry, Dorian. I'm so sorry. I, 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 are you all right? I'm fine. I said that kid is so lucky. She's family. Would you excuse me, please? I want to have a few moments alone with my niece. Oh, yes, of course. I'll be in the, in, in, in the bar. Good. Well, Kelly, you've had your moment. I hope you're feeling lots better. Because we better move on. We do have things we need to discuss. I don't think so. Oh, really? Well, this is going to be the day you change your mind, young lady, because I have plans. I have big plans, and they include you. Because, do not forget, family is family after all, isn't it? You know what, Dorian? I think it's whatever you say it is, okay? Joey and I have plans. Let's get out of here. Fine, let's go. Joe, don't you ever, ever think that you can come between me and my family. I, I just heard about what happened to Dylan. And I ran over here without thinking. I, I, just wanted, I just wanted to see you. It's bad, isn't it? I'm sorry. And here I was, feeling sorry for myself, and, and you were suffering like this. Now that I know why you didn't come last night, I feel like an idiot. What? What do you mean? You just found out? Yeah, just a few minutes ago. But I left you a message last night. You didn't get it? No, I, I, I didn't get a message, no. So that's where party was. <laughs> At a poor, injured husband's bedside. My, my, what self-sacrifice. Yeah, Lou, it's Blair. Um, I have a large bouquet of flowers sent over to Landview Hospital, to Dylan Moody. Have the card say, my thoughts are with you and Marty through this terrible ordeal. Get well soon, Blair. But not too soon. <laughs> Dorian, you may think that I am driving Kelly away from you, but... You were the one that wrote the book, remember? The book has very little to do with Kelly. Oh, really? really? Even though there's a character in it who sounds exactly like her, even though I am one of the main characters in the book, and Kelly loves me, even though you ridicule my mother throughout the entire book, and Kelly knows damn well how much it Don't hurts me. Don't you talk to me about your mother, all right? My life is very much a part of that book. Who? through the entire enfolding of that particular story, huh? Thanks to your mother, I was sent to death row. Thanks to your mother, I was locked up in a dungeon, in a cell, never knowing which of her personalities that she was going to turn into. She made me give up your love. She made me marry that moronic con me, man, you know, David I'm sorry, Vickers. I thought we were talking about Kelly. No, we are talking about us. Us, Joe. I loved you, and I lost you. Fine. I am now going to put together the pieces of my life. So, let's straighten something out. I did not kind of randomly throw together that book out of spite, although it has become a means to an end. Oh, good. So you purged yourself, huh? Yes. Hmm. On one level, I did. On another level, it's been purely business. Yes, Joe. I am going to take this book, and I am going to turn it into a whole new world for myself. Yes, I'm going to develop a, a line of perfumes, clothing, <laughs> who knows what else. And I'm going to bring Kelly in with me. She's a Kramer. And we Kramers, we thrive on power and on success. She is going to love it. Believe me, in the end, she's going to be grateful to me. Maybe. Maybe she'll just tell you to get lost. Maybe your whole family will tell you to get lost if you keep hurting them like this. Then you're going to be all alone, Dorian. All alone with your perfume and your clothes and your books. Hmm. 
Okay. I'm ready to go. Good. Me too. Joe Buchanan. Don't bet against me. Because you won't win. You know what you are? You're a mensch, just like your father. Well, you feel a little bit better now, Nora? Yes, I do, I do, I do. She, was, she seemed awfully strung out, though. Mm. But I feel better. And good job, Drew. You handled it well. Yeah, well, I invented as I went along. <laughs> you know, she seems really nice. Yeah. yeah. But she still needs that powder. Yeah. And a friend. Someone who will listen and talk to her. Make no judgments. Something Hank and I were never able to do. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself until she gets here. I mean, what is it? Uh, she's coming at 7 o'clock, and then what? I mean, how many times do you have to go out with Rachel before you can get her to trust you completely? Listen, Nora, why don't you go on back to Landview? What? I mean, just for the night. Spend the night with your husband. You can tell Hank and Sheila what's going on, and, and come back here sometime tomorrow. And you'll back Drew up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, plus, I want to get a line on who it is that's supplying Rachel. What if she doesn't show? I mean, what happens if we lose Rachel again? I think she'll show. Besides, we can't afford another close encounter, and you'll be back tomorrow anyway. Yeah, relax, Nora. We're not going to lose her. Everything's under control. Glitter Escort Service. It's Rocky. Oh, hi, honey. So how'd it go last night? Who's this guy, Drew? Huh? Where did you get him? Well, I'm not sure why. Did something go wrong? I am never seeing him again, okay? You got that ever? And don't you tell him anything about me. Rocky. You got that? Rocky, take it easy. Of course, I won't tell him anything about you. We protect our girls. As far as this Drew is concerned, you might as well have vanished in the thin air. You mean one of the waiters at the club was supposed to give me a message? Yes. Oh, God, if I'd only had known that. When he didn't show up last night, I was beside myself. I was sure... I was sure that you weren't able to tell Dylan the truth. And... Margaret, what is it? You, you didn't think I could tell Dylan the truth? Is that why you're in the stables on the bed with Blair? What? How could you do that? Margaret, wait a minute. I didn't do anything. Blair came to me. She saw how miserable I was, and, and she wanted to comfort me. That's all. How in God's name could you think that, that I would turn to her? I, I, I love you with all my heart, and I, I always will. How could you possibly doubt that? I'm so exhausted. I'm so scared. Just say it. Whatever it is, I'll do it. Marty? Your husband's asking for you. 